Okay, next we have Richard Hanwood. Um, Richard joined MemCloud, now Intel HPDD, from the Rutherford Appleton Laboratory UK, where he worked for many years on data services for photon and space science. Thank you, Sal. And uh, thank you for the previous speakers uh, for the publicity uh, on this topic of the Luster Manual, in particular, Chris Marone yesterday. Uh, there's no such thing as bad publicity, I hope. Uh, so, topic today is Luster Manual. I've brought a copy along here. Um, I'm going to describe the, some of the hist history behind it, uh, some of the things I really like about it, and give you a, invite you all to participate um, in many, many different areas that this, this project opens up. So, uh, as of right now, um, I think the Luster Manual really is your best bet if you want any of these brand new features. Uh, we've got the four megabyte RPCs. It's in the manual. It tells you how to turn it on, tells you how to turn it off. Um, network request scheduler, uh, quite an important feature. A couple of hundred lines, a uh, number of pages in the manual. And then um, one of the big features for 2.4, multiple MDTs. We've heard a lot about it. Hopefully you attended these talk and got an idea of how to use it. But when you're retiring to your room this evening and really want to delve in, uh, the place to get that is the Luster Manual. And to give you an idea uh, of the kind of uh, the, the, the work that needed to happen for that, I, I brought along a copy here. And if you can see from, from close up, you'll see a, a row of blue tabs. That's, that's the extent of work that had to go in just for that one change on multiple metadata servers. So that's not all. Uh, we've already heard uh, about multiple metadata servers. Uh, yesterday we heard, <coughs> excuse me, Luster tuning parameters from Bobby. Those are in the manual. Uh, Luster FSCK from Alex, turning that on, turning that off, changing the speed, um, listening for its events. That's in the Luster manual, Wireshark uh, from Doug just this, today, um, change logs. We're gonna hear about that tomorrow. Those are documented in the manual. And then, uh, question yesterday about job stats. Job stats have obviously not had that much publicity, um, but they do exist and they are in the manual. Um, MDS survey, this time last year we were talking about that. A tool that allows you to benchmark your metadata server without any OSTs various other details on debugging, et cetera, et cetera. So I wanted to share with you a little bit of my background with it. This is a project that has, uh, predates me, um, but the, uh, I just wanted to share with you where it began for me. And that was sitting down with TAC, uh, Texas Advanced Compute Center, who were interested in this particular parameter, the uh, client stats. And their question was, I think simple and perfectly legitimate. Uh, read bytes. Is that the number of bytes which are read by the client? And does it count bytes that come in over the wire or doesn't it? So if you're just fulfilling a read from cache, does the number of bytes go up? Uh, so a good question. Um, the answer was, OK, let's look in the code. Uh, the code was looked at, and um, it was decided that uh, read bytes measured uh, the bytes over the wire. And not only that, uh, TAC also discovered a bug. So they submitted a patch for the bug, but also didn't want to stop there. They didn't want other people to have to go through this burdensome activity of reading the code um, when a nice piece of documentation would, would suffice. So their approach, uh, which I congratulate them for not, uh, uh, well, I do congratulate them for, for, for taking a sledgehammer to crack this tiny nut um, because it's, it's, it's enabled us to repeat, repeatedly use that same uh, sledgehammer. And so the approach was to, from the dormant copy of HTML manual on the Lustre site, to deconstruct or reconstruct a doc book version. And that's the version we have now. Uh, the version that's built for every change submitted. And um, as, as you can see here, we can do some analysis on it. 
It is, in fact, over 100,000 words. That's a typo up there. Um, you can see what that looks like printed out. It's about the size of a, a typical novel. Uh, it's available instantaneously for all builds as PDF, HTML, and EPUB. And we've, we've accumulated 90 commits. And uh, I'm pretty, pretty pleased with that. It's a number which has crawled up because people have really found issues. They've submitted bugs. They've been very proactive. To my best knowledge, there hasn't been an opportunity to talk publicly about the manual. But nevertheless, we've got, we've got pretty, pretty good numbers there. You can see the progress of the commits, nice steady stream of people correcting stuff and adding new features. It's, it's worth pointing out at this stage that uh, the point of start there is not a manual from, from nothing. It's, it's an inherited piece of work which uh, some of the usual suspects were involved in the creation. And, and Linda Baberners, who still remains close to the project, got us to that, that baseline there. So the workflow to submit a change to, an LE, uh, to the manual begins with the JIRA system. There's a LU doc branch um, project. You, can, you will create a, an issue there and identify either a typo or an inaccuracy or an ambition to document a feature which is not currently documented or, or uh, potentially a meta task uh, producing some other novel output format. Typically, if, if yours is a change to the uh, document um, and you're so motivated you can push your own changes up using Git. Um, and then we go into the workflow, which I'm extremely excited about. I, I really value uh, the ability for the technical or the more experienced engineers to set the expectation and then to coach the changes around this circle until a patch is suitable for our standards. Once it's done, it is gatekeeped uh, into the Lustre manual, new PDF produced, and you can see, see there it is up to your, your discretion whether you take it further and uh, run off down the print shop and, and have a a nicely bound version created. When you begin to have a look at the manual, um, some things will become immediately obvious as you peel away the top page. Uh, the manual is written in XML and it's in DocBook. DocBook is an indus industry standard for writing technical documentation and it's in XML which allows a number of tools um, to be able to interrogate, validate, and verify. Uh, as, as, a, as a corollary, there are 400 tags in the DocBook standard. It is uh, large and complex, and it's, it's XML. And XML um, does also have some, uh, XML, if you've got the right tool, then, then it, it uh, it's worth spending a bit of time to get the right tool. And a uh, frequently asked question I have of me is, what is the right tool? And uh, I put some popular text editors there. I could have included Notepad because the tool chain is supported on Windows as well as Mac and um, Linux. Um, and then two, two additional tools, Sienna and Oxygen XML editor. I've played a bit with Sienna, and it provides a WYSIWYG-like interface. It can be somewhat um, finickety if you're doing major restructuring, pulling bits in and out of the manual, but pretty good for general text editing. Oxygen XML editor, we're currently evaluating that. My judgment is that it's it's probably the, uh, the high watermark or the benchmark for other other tools to be measured against. Um, if you are looking at tools, a crucial piece that we use of the XML standard is xinclude. Um, that allows us to have separate files for each chapter in the manual, and so you should look for a tool that, that supports that. So digging a bit deeper and talking about some of the complexity, um, a small example here, uh, replaceable. So a ch chunk of XML there, um, title of the section, 
and then a apparent screenshot or sorry a screen dump of what you would expect if you were using LCTL and within the XML we then annotate um, bits of the bits of the text which are replaceable in this case and you'll see slightly washed out at the bottom that we get this rather attractive uh, emphasis or italicization on the MDT device when it finally hits the, uh, the rendering. It's worth spending a bit of time. Uh, there are some subtle and, um, uh, as I say, there's an awful lot of these different decorators. Uh, the good news is that um, we, we have quite a bit of exposure to it now, so being able to identify when you have to apply them or not is, uh, is, is, is getting easier. Um, and then one specific feature that we use in a um, uh, in my ben in, in my judgment a re real benefit for us at the moment in the development of the project is the conditional tag um, sorry the conditional attribute this can be applied to any tag uh, and you'll see at the top there I've applied a conditional attribute to star um, to uh, a star. Uh, the star could be a section or a chapter or it could just be a, uh, a paragraph. Um, it could be a example piece of code. What this does after rendering is decorate the rendered version with a, um, a w essentially a warning or at least a caveat to tell users this feature is only available in Lustre 2.3. Um, the L2.4, there's a uh, discontinuity there. Uh, L24 would have told you this feature is only available in Lustre 2.4. Um, as an aside, this is another feature which uh, has been mentioned, binding CPU um, threads to partitions. Um, if you want to know how to do that, it was discussed earlier by Liang. It's in the manual. So that's kind of... Um, kind of the the only real the only slight variations that we have beyond uh, a vanilla and generic doc book workflow um, I have didn't really touch on it but we review the tickets in the JIRA system that allows anyone who connects to go in and provide reviews provide feedbacks specific to individual lines in the document and is really driving forward the progress of this document. So with every change, we are really moving to a state where that this is a reliable source of information. Um, so there are lots of opportunities. Um, if, you have a, if you have passion and energy around uh, grammar, for example, uh, would welcome your input on, uh, on text. If there are features that you don't, don't understand or don't see, welcome that as feedback in, into the LU doc system. Um, and if, you, um, if you're developing something, then it's really going to be a, a requirement at some point that you have shared in, in, a, in the document, in the manual, how to operate your feature. So the final slide for me is some eye candy. This shows uh, something that we can, I can do locally, um, and we're extremely close, uh, but uh, uses the public and rendering engine and puts us, I think, in the, uh, in the same league as our colleagues uh, at Red Hat and all of the other um, people who use this system for documentation. So that concludes my talk. Are there any questions or comments? So the question is, it's hosted at Intel. Uh, you personally would like to see it hosted at OpenSFS? Or Lustre.org. Or Lustre.org. So um, at the moment, the OpenSFS links back to that, to this document that's built directly on our, our build servers. Um, so 
the um, the process by which we would distribute that is is something which uh, I've been chatting to Peter about. Um, but whether we would take a snapshot or, or or what that would look like is still uh, undecided by me, or undecided. Full stop. Right now, menu is single, very large book, and it may, can be very difficult for a beginner to read that. So the question is about documentation in general. Are there plans to uh, split or generate several documents like uh, quick introduction, user manual, admin manual, reference, tutorials? So are there any plans about that? <laughs> Um, I had a conversation in the uh, over coffee at breakfast or lunch uh, at the break, and there was a keen um, interest in um, some of the more advanced documentation, uh, for example, the Lustre Internals document, and maybe something uh, less advanced. Um, this project, the scope of this project, really is focused on this: the operations manual. And depending on resources, availability, and interest, then um, certainly the tool chain could be reused for for those other documents. But at the moment, my interest and concentrated effort is on getting this into a state where it's no longer the subject of derision, uh, but uh, is a valuable thing that we give to people. If you're new to Lustre, have a read of this. This will get you going. So uh, just to comment, uh, the the Lustre manual is currently hosted, it's built by Intel and it's hosted on the build server. It's, but it's a PDF that's available for anyone to just download. You can just use wget or whatever to host that anywhere you want. And it's also, the, the Git tree is available and anyone could also build it and, and host that version as well. So just because it's built by Intel doesn't mean it's the only place that it can be, it can live. Thank you, Robert. Right, uh, and the reason you can do that, Robert, is because it is licensed under the um, C Creative Commons 3.0. Have you considered making a branch tag structure to match the distributions of the Lustre code itself so that we can generate versions that include all bug fixes to the manual to match whatever version of software we're running? Uh, yes, that's a, a, another frequently asked question. Um, my personal judgment is that in order for us to move to a point where we are branching along with the manual, uh, with the code, we should have our code, the document, in a state which is release ready. And my personal judgment is that we are not at that state yet. So in order to defer this decision, but nevertheless anticipate it at some point in the future, the conditional attributes that can be applied can be used to tease apart, for example, a version that only has up to two, three um, features, for example. Um, just a comment about the, uh, the, the correctness or what uh, the accuracy of the manual. I think it would be wise of us to create um, commit cl collateral um, so we should be adding the LU doc tickets for any feature that, ch that, that goes into the code that necessitates a change in the manual. And then at least if you're looking at the source, you know where to go look at the documentation associated with the feature. Thank you, Corey. Um, I did soft pedal on that issue a little bit, but it almost certainly will become, I, I believe it's gonna become a requirement for features that need documentation to have documentation. So are there any other questions? So uh, Peter's comment there, and this could be the final comment, would be uh, we are now l literally linking LUs to LU docs. So this process is well underway, and we're tracking those. Thank, Thank you. you.